for attending. Uh, Carol, could you uh, update the minutes to reflect the real estate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just so everybody in the audience is aware that uh, our meeting is now on undertake. And in the future, we're still planning on bringing a meeting as well, but just not quite there yet. Um, we have on the agenda um, uh, receiving the minutes for December the 30th and January the 6th. I uh, have a request to table these, uh, and um, that's what I, what I want to do today. Receiving the preliminary year to date balance sheet for December 2019. <clears throat> Chuck, uh, I took a look at the, uh, the variances and I'd like you to speak to it just a little bit. Uh, in, my, in the, uh, the uh, documents, the notes of the series, we have a $35,000 uh, negative variance on that. And, uh, and can you, could you come up to the podium? Talk and introduce yourself so everybody knows who you are. Um, Chuck Wilson, I'm the uh, finance director. Uh, the, the primary variance there is in the uh, real estate transfer tax. Uh, not going to the same level of activity that we did in the prior year. Uh, earned income taxes within the last few days, we are still receiving the 2019 uh, taxes at this point. Until February 15th. So that, that has formed positive uh, since this was put together. Since the weekend. Since the weekend. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Actually, it's been out Friday, it's the last day. The last two days have been uh, good. Uh, that's really it. I, I would expect that we're going to be pretty even in terms of the variance by the time all the revenues come in. That's it. That's all we're going to do. Do I have a motion to accept the uh, receive the uh, receive the preliminary year to date balance sheet for December 2019? So, have a second. Second. Is there any discussion from supervisors of the audience? Okay. Have a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. It's accepted. Um, we took it off the, yeah, we took it off. There was another, uh, some of the folks said if you went online, um, there was a uh, historical commission uh, presentation. However, the presenter was not able to make it tonight. So that's why we, that's why we took it off. So you, you may see a difference between the online version and the version that was just taken out there. Um, next, we have the Delaware Regional Planning Commission Streetlight Procurement Program. Uh, exciting stuff, Craig. Could you uh, fill us in, please? Uh, yes, a few years ago, 2018, we uh, went into an agreement with the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission to update our uh, street lights. Uh, there was a couple phases. We went into phase one. It was a no-cost lighting inventory for the township. The company came in, went through all the street lights throughout the township. And they had 128 street lights that they looked at um, that were on our books. Um, so they gave us an inventory of that at no cost. In 2019, they did phase two. Phase two was asked us if we wanted that uploaded into the GIS system in our in our, uh, our uh, software. So they did that for $2,419. They're coming back now with phase three and four. That would be um, going into an agreement with Keystone Lighting Solutions for $41,064 for the installation of new street lights. Um, in the inventory versus the inventory versus the uh, street lights that we're paying for, there's a difference. We have 128 light fixtures that we're paying for. We have 157 street lights on the street. We're not sure what happened there, but we're not paying for that's a, a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
So uh, they're looking to upgrade all the 157 street lights for $41,064 for the, uh, the lighting company. And um, the Federal Valley Regional Planning Commission to do all the work would be um, $52,007. So $52,007 is the total amount. 41 of that is coming into the installation of the new street lights. The rest is for um, all of the, the paperwork. There's also a PICO rebate of $6,450 that will be uh, secured. <coughs> the total cost for the township would be $45,557 to upgrade the 157 street lights throughout the township. Um, Mr. DeStefano is here. If he has anything else to say, the public works director, Mike DeStefano, if you have anything else to add. Can I do something else? Pretty much there. So we're looking for uh, an agreement that we need a resolution signed for the uh, purchasing agreement and participation in phases three and four, along with an agreement with Keystone Lighting Services for $41,064. So you need a motion? You need a motion for both. For both the upgrade the resolution and the agreement resolution. Okay. Um, do I have a motion for the resolution? Can I ask a couple questions? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Are these LED lights? Yes. They're all LED lights. What's the approximate lifespan? With the, with the new technology, the lifespan to predict would be somewhere up to 20 years before these lights would have to be upgraded again. So, the 157 that we know we have versus the 128, which they allocated. There's 29 difference. Those 29 lights will be, do we have plans to upgrade them or are they just not included? They will be upgraded. The 157 will be upgraded. Is the total now? What we won't see is the uh, as much catch up to do this um, because we're going to be adding 29 street lights to Pico Hills now. Okay. So our bills we will we'll increase, the but there won't be as much cost savings because we haven't been paying for 29 street lights for. Since they've been installed. So I guess the question is if I understand what we mean in phases, how are we going to implement the changing out of the lights? He said we'll be doing the installation all at once. All at once? Yes. Oh, it's not phasing. Okay. So. And are the fixtures that are being installed um, sort of like a universal so that we can continue to replace the lights, or is that in the whole? Well, what it, it actually depends on the fixture itself. Uh, for example, I'll use the lights going down the Bethlehem Pike or the, the ornamental one. They're a high end ornamental fixture. So, but those fixtures will be getting um, what is it? Uh, they'll be an uh, upgrade. So, what they'll be doing with those fixtures there, they'll be putting LED bulbs in them. So, if the bulb were to go bad, we could replace that ourselves and everything like that. They'll be doing the whole retrofit kit for them. Um, some, of, some of the lower end LEDs, um, like the, just the regular uh, square colonials, they call them. Um, what they'll end up doing is they'll be replacing all fixtures in kind. Uh, the Cobra Head Street lights that you see, um, like along the main roads at the intersection, the traffic signals, they will be completely swapped out. There'll be new uh, fixtures for that. I have a motion uh, to approve the resolution. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. But before we say that, does the audience have any questions about the street lights? No. Okay. So I'm sorry about that. So uh, all approved. I please approve. Okay. Thank you. Now I need a motion for the agreement. Separate question. Can I have a motion for the agreement to be placed? So. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Mike, you're up again. Uh, purchase of a Toro 30 inch stand on a turf area. Yeah, every year, a couple of times throughout the course of the year, we uh, we have a fertilizing program to maintain our turf athletic fields and everything like that to keep them you know, thick and green and for when we do the overseeding. Uh, what this piece of home will do allow us to go through in the spring. Um, start preparing the fields for the upcoming playing season. In the fall, the same thing, to get the fertilizer for uh, 
get down into the root system or to the field where there are, you know, excellent plant conditions since they're already heavily mm -hmm. used. Um, this piece of equipment is now going probably have a 15 to 20 year life expectancy and everything like that. It's purchased through CoStars, through uh, turf equipment at a cost of $8,375.30. Okay. Uh, does anybody uh, on the supervisors have any questions? No, I make a motion though that we purchase this uh, turbo 30 inch stand up. Okay. I so, this is just merely to fertilize the baseball fields? It's all the athletic fields. It's just not, it's not baseball fields because we, we got all the fields in uh, Pennelwood's Park building that's used by, you know, by soccer, uh, lacrosse, and everything. It'll do all the athletic fields in the township. We actually use it out here at the township building and the other properties as well. How do we do that right now? Right now, um, we have a, an old tractor that we pull in an old fashioned aerator behind. But the problem is with the field conditions being as wet as they had the past few years, we've been unable to get on the field with a <coughs> piece of equipment. But this, you know, being a lighter and smaller, more versatile piece of equipment does, does not do damage to the field or anything like that. And actually, what we've been doing since we've been trying to lead up to this purchase, we've, we've been demoing models from different distributors and everything like that. So kind of using the manufacturers to our advantage in the spring and the fall. But we're at the point now we ran out of demos. <laughs> <laughs> Slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Grant uh, had a motion. Uh, well, any supervisors have any questions up here? Uh, would the audience have any questions? Very creative. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. Next on the agenda is the purchase of a, a new police car. Chief? Yes. Hi, good evening. Um, as we discussed at our capital budget meetings from last year, we did, we did budget money for replacing the vehicle for the police department. Uh, this would replace our oldest unmarked vehicle, 2006 GMC Envoy. Uh, there was a lot of questions uh, about the feasibility of incorporating an electric vehicle. Um, I did reach out to several police chiefs seven or eight that surround us. Uh, spoke at a few uh, police chief meetings about this, and uh, I'm not alone in feeling that in an emergency response type vehicle, the technology is not there yet for an electric vehicle. Uh, two examples in the last month would have been where, uh, no, not too pretty much, uh, back a lot, um, a vehicle, was used for two straight days on a surveillance. Um, it ended up in Jersey, it ended up all over. Um, about two weeks ago, I was calling Matt, I don't want to give example after example, but I was down in Meadows and there was like a middle school parking lot for about four hours where we were searching for a missing person. So it was after a day shift, four more hours. I just don't see the um, capability of our electric type of vehicle to push It's just not there. Um, so what I did do is, um, my current vehicle is a Ford Explorer. We currently have Chevy Tahoe's as our frontline emergency vehicles. We do have two Ford Explorers. One is marked, one is unmarked. Ford is going to a hybrid situation with police patrol vehicles. So a PPV is a police patrol vehicle. You can't buy a purpose. PPVs before explorers are going to the hybrid. We all have concerns about that, being that it's something new. And give you an option, we could try that as a, an alternative. It does have batteries. It runs off of battery and gas. Uh, my, this vehicle could be a test vehicle, not a, it won't be a marked vehicle if we choose to go that route, to see if we want to do that with our marked cars. I'm not sure I want to go that route with a marked car either being a hybrid. Um, so in the memo that I discussed, I explained all that, and I gave the uh, board two options. If they so choose, option A was just, is just a unique Ford Explorer that you currently purchase, that I currently have. 
would be another quarter score. Uh, the hybrid version is about five thousand dollars more for a quarter score hybrid. I would prefer to stay with the what we have. Uh, we don't need to experiment with what we're going to uh, you know, let it run its course for a period of time. Uh, I'd definitely be in favor of just staying with the conventional one. And, and I'm not an expert in this at all. I, I know very little it's about too hybrids and batteries and all of this. Uh, it's too I guess I was just giving you, giving you two options here. Uh, I'm not sure which way to go with it. But that's a separate issue. That's an extra conversation with patrol cars. You know, we're thrilled with Chevy Tahoe's. They don't have to be an unmarked car. Chevy Tahoe's not. You know, not going to miss the car. Did you buy a hybrid? Yes. Did you, did you just say that you would not want to use it as a marked car? Th this request is for it. Right? This is a personal unmarked vehicle. There's two staff members, myself and the lieutenant, have vehicles that are unmarked. This will replace one of those, a 2006 on board. And if it's a hybrid, what might be the uh, payback for that technology? It will, it will use less fuel. I know, but the payback meaning when is it uh, that we start saving money on fuel? Well, you would start saving right away. The question is whether or not we're going to save five thousand dollars for the added expense over the length of the vehicle, and I don't know the answer to that because it is new. It is new in the Ford Explorer. Um, I don't know. Yeah, aside from police cars, though, that Ford is introducing this to the public customer. Uh, hybrid, yes. And yes. Do we have a consumer report on? I think it's brand, I believe it's just brand new for 2020. But I, I like the idea of having a hybrid, but if we don't have any deal for the reliability of this particular I mean, just me speaking with Pat, and everybody probably knew what his nose had. Pat stands behind it. You know, he's a car, he's a guy who He's a new truck salesman at Burger uh, Ford Bay down the street. Uh, I'm sure it's a great car. Uh, I'm not ready to make that leap of faith for a frontline police car. I'm not ready to make Because then there's it's different. When you're talking the features of this hybrid, you lose a lot of features if you accelerate hard, which is what a patrol car does, a market patrol car. A lot of the features that come in this hybrid would not fit traditional police work, where it's going to sit idling for hours and hours. You know, there's there's a lot of things that I don't see in the police field. But that's where the Ford's out. So hopefully the technology will stay with us and we'll see some results <clears throat> where uh, possible. Well, I'm happy to take your recommendation. So my recommendation is really A or B. I don't really have <laughs> um, I put it out there as you know, the, the one is uh, option A is just a straight Ford Explorer. Option B is the hybrid version. Uh, oh, come on. I really don't have You're a hybrid not convinced that, yeah, that the hybrid really, you don't want to be the test. No. We don't want to be the test. No, yeah. not really. Yeah. No, um, but I'm fine either way. <laughs> well, we pushed you pretty hard last year. You did. You did. You did. Each year, pretty good. Yes. Yes. So you went back and you took a look. Yep. And, and I'm not alone. Um, this has been uh, my email that I sent all my friends, and at the last chief meeting, everybody in the municipal world here received that grant for these charters. Mm -hmm. So it is being talked about in every municipality how are we going to incorporate that into our fleet. And every police chief would say, not us. <laughs> not yet. Right. Not us. Not yet. Right. We don't want to be the... It's just not right. It's not right. Well, we need you to pick something, because you're the one that's going to be most closely in the spot. So do you need a motion from us tonight? Mm -hmm. Yes. I would pick out tonight. I'd, I'd save the $5,000 and go with what we're going to do. Well, I'll make a motion to purchase option A, 2020 Ford Explorer, 
at $45,386. Sir. Okay. Any comments from the audience? And, and the purchase and installation for seven. Yeah, the, the upfitting is, is a high number. The <coughs> upfitting means, so in order to be an emergency vehicle, the vehicle has to have lights in the sun. And has to have lights on 360 degree light. Uh, the first one to tell you, don't use it a lot, but when you do use it, you better not, you better have it for liability. It has to have a wall. And you know, that's hot. 7500 is hot. We're going to go to a different vendor, so uh, I'm confident with that number that we'll be all done. Craig, you have a comment? The comment was that the price is going to be $52,086. Right. Because uh, that includes the five right. 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 Mm -hmm. The car is 45 to outfit it, outfit it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I reached 75. We won't call 75. But what's inside of the car? Thank you. Any, any more comments from the supervisors? Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you very much. Welcome. Um, E-cycling and shredding, that's, we've had uh, a number of discussions on how, how we want to proceed with that. Um, I think the consensus, and the rest of the supervisors can speak for themselves, the consensus appears to be that we'll keep the e-cycle process in the date uh, as it currently exists. But we will be participating um, on a volunteer basis in the recycling efforts of our, our reps, which are going to be held over at the, uh, the high school. I don't have a date for that. Does anybody have that date? I do. May. May 16th. May 16th. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, so, so we're going to do both, is really what it comes down to. I'm going to ask the EAC uh, if uh, our, that's our. Started out as a recycling committee, but it's an environmental committee. If uh, we can send some volunteers over there, well, any committee can send uh, volunteers over there. So, uh, uh, what would be so? I believe we can bring three boxes of material that can be shredded at that event as well. Residents can bring three boxes or bags of shredding to the Mistake High School. Right. And we don't have a limit at uh, the Lower Gwena Township building. Well, Personally. There's a limit. Uh, you can't bring a box truck full. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have sent people away with that. Yeah, well, they come with you almost full. They bounce well and certain. Kind of, uh, yeah. Commercial uh, way of thinking about it. Um, and the, uh, could you fill us in a little bit on uh, the uh, e cycle and what the costs are on that? Right? The e cycle, um, the, the company that we have used in the past. The name is Samar and the Supreme Asset Asset Management Recycling. Um, the protocol is four thousand four hundred fifty dollars. That is anything with a plug that you can come into, pull into the parking lot. We'll take it and we'll pack it up and recycle that. Um, we do have another um, party, um, Par, who also does similar. Uh, recycle electronics. Um, they have an eight hundred fifty dollars set up. They, they, they come in here. We pay them eight hundred fifty dollars, and then anyone that comes with anything with a plug, we get charged for that service. So if you come in with a TV, you would get charged a number. Um, we are averaging nine point three tons of electronic over the last twelve years. So we, we do have a good number out there, it's not one or two years. Um, and we believe uh, just by them throwing the invoices out to us when they, so we can go with the PARS people. Um, they would collect it, they would invoice the township after that day and tell them, tell us how much we owe. Um, I would rather not have an open book and an open checkbook for them um, because of the 9.3 tons of electronics. When we saw some of the invoices that other municipalities have done this, um, it's far less than 9.3 tons and it's already over the 4,400 dollars that we would pay the other companies. So, um, so I guess what's on the table is 
Um, we can go how we have been going and pay the $4,450 with the company, or we can go with the par company. The township would save money. It would be $850 for the township, and then the residents would pay for anything they wanted to install. Now, remember, it's very hard to get rid of TVs these days. So a lot of people wouldn't care if they had to pay $20 or $40 to get rid of the TV because you can't get rid of the TV anymore. But it's up to uh, the board whether we want the residents to pay or not. Either way, they're paying its tax money. Sure. Well, um, I would like to comment on this, uh, first of all, Mark, I didn't know uh, you had that uh, discussion on this, and uh, uh, to participate in both, uh, I definitely would be in favor of that. Uh, the residents of Lower Atlantic, uh, uh having been awarded a $31,000 check for the recycling committee that uh, I had mentioned, uh, I've been on for 25 years, uh, and just resigned from that. Uh, so for $31,000 for a reward uh, back to us because of our recycling, uh, $4,000 to pay for just lower one residents uh, is a thank you to them for their recycling. So uh, I definitely would just uh, recommend that we stay with who we've had, uh, make sure it's only lower one residents, and uh, also participate in the county um, or the state reps uh, collection uh, in Wissa uh, do both. Uh, but definitely uh, with computers and TVs, uh, uh, let's say thank you to our residents because of, of us participating and uh, giving you a, a reward for doing what you've been doing. That's recycling. So uh, that's my comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, uh, I would make that in the form of a motion. Um, okay, well, I, what's your motion exactly? Uh, is to participate in both, continue with the lower one and one as we have in the past, and also participate in the state reps uh, or the state collection in May. Okay, so does everybody know what we're talking about here? This is an annual event that we have in Lower Gwinnett in, in April, kind of in the Earth Day month, where it's out here in the parking lot and it's a one-stop shop. You can pull up with your shredding, and you can pull up with anything with the plug, drop it off, it's shredded, it's disposed of all in one day. So the proposal this evening, or this alternate, is to take, bifurcate the paper shredding from the e-cycling, taking the shredding up to the high school with rep representatives and um, senators from Harrisburg in May but retain the e-cycling here in April, April 4th, is that the day? Uh, it's April 4th, but April. It's, it's, the event here would be e-cycle and paper shredding. Oh, so we're going to, to retain yes. both here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. So we're basically keeping it as is. What's the date what we're of that? Um, the original date that we um, secured is April 4th, but that was prior to, um, you know, the, all the discussions that took place. So we would have to go back, um, if it's approved this evening, we would have to go back and make sure that date was still available. I, I have not heard that it is not available, so I'm assuming it is, but it would have to be confirmed. All right. Well, okay. we have time to put it in our township newsletter. So that no. We no. No. Okay, we put it, put it on the website and uh, uh, make sure... So, so the issue with the, I guess, is with the e-cycling, which vendor? We're which vendor? Use. Yeah. I'm in favor of giving you all a gift, coming in with anything that you have with the club that we're looking to get rid of, and using the what is the name of that vendor? Uh, Samar. Samar for the four thousand or so dollars. So is that conformity with your motion, Mr. Brand? Yes. Yeah. Amend your motion to state you with the second part. Of the yes, I I agree with the second part of that. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, is, is it a fact that we got the third one thousand? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what is going to be done with the rest of that money uh, after we subtract the four thousand? Well, this is like a little bonus to the township manager 
and he just smiles when he gets that check every year, and he just says, oh, this is great. <laughs> so you would have to run that test by our manager, and uh, I'm sure he'll report what he does with it, but uh, um, it gives him a little cushion where he's really tight in the budget. So it's not restricted funds? No, it's not restricted. I'm sure, but a lot of times we would do recycled uh, benches and parks. We do give uh, to the EAC. Uh, they have a budget now, so uh, it does go back. We try to put it back um, with recycled material. So what I'm getting at is, we have thirty-one thousand dollars. Do we have to restrict ourselves to four thousand dollars because the remainder of that money is uh, designated for another use already, or? Is it okay to spend the thirty-one thousand dollars in recycling? No. <laughs> we're, we're not restricted. I'm not aware of that. That's not restricted like like fuels. No, you're right. not. We're not restricted. Right. So it's in the general fund. It's in the general fund, but the general fund now has a buy item in it for our uh, environmental issues. And we didn't prior to this year. I don't believe we uh, tracked it that way. Flash years on that started in 2019. Yeah. So, so this is the key track of our issues and the other issues and so forth. But it's unrestricted, we're not restricted by um, legislative action. So okay. Any more questions? Okay, so just so we're clear, there's a motion on the table. And the second, uh, to keep our e cycling and shredding event the way it is. Plus, uh, participate in a shredding event run by the county, and that this event will not <coughs> cost uh, any of the residents, residents only, uh, to drop off any plug items uh, when they come in for the event. So, I just want to make sure that pretty much we're keeping it the way it was, plus, we're going to participate in the county. And I have a second. So, is there any questions from the audience? No. Aye. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Aye. Uh, public comments. Uh, anybody has an opportunity to uh, comment on anything you'd like, prefer to keep it on township business. And uh, please come up and you know, state your name, your address, and use the microphone up here. Plan to come out tonight, but since the meeting's short, my name is Leola Hubbard and I'm a res resident of Penland, but I'm also currently working with the U.S. Census Bureau. And I wanted to make sure everybody here realizes that this is the year for our, our this decennial census count. Everybody in the country must be counted. But it's to our advantage to participate when we get our questionnaires in the mail. Because for every person who is count accounted for in the census, approximately $2,000 comes back to their community for services such as roads, bridges, all kinds of services. But I'm also a recruiter, and I want you to know, I want my neighbors to know that we are recruiting people for census jobs now. $27 an hour plus 58 cents a mile for the census taker. And there are other clerical and supervisory jobs available in the Norristown office. The website in Lower Gwinnett has the link right directly to the census page. So if you're interested in applying or getting more information about the census itself, it's online. Thank you. The Question. Uh, could you utilize, say, some of the students at uh, Gwinnett University, University that may I'll want to work? There. I'll be there on the 18th. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Leo. Does anybody else uh, have any comments they'd like to make? Yes. I have a question. Oh, well, I'm 
Only in this deep coming in and then we're to ice and sure we'll hear in Lord Bay. This is just a heads up. Uh, Craig, you mentioned I, and I've also talked to Kathy about updating the trail marking system. We have 25 miles of trails in our township. We, the park and rec board, marked them how many years ago was that? Hey? Seven or eight years ago? A little longer than that. Longer than that. 10 or 12. Maybe. So it's time to update the trail marking system. Um, Craig and I mixed met several weeks ago. I have walked two of the trails to do a preliminary report. And there's going to be, there's, excuse me, I can't shift that the top of it right here. Um, we need to do some work. I, I talked to Mitch, Mitch and I are going to get together and put a plan together. So there's going to be some expenses in the upcoming months. But it's critical in our township that all the 25 miles of trails are appropriately marked. Paul really helped us out on all that because we put the maps in all of our police cars. And we all know that several years ago, our state representative fell broke her ankle walking her dog on the Pin Oak Trail. But where the jump marking system she would have because it's the middle of the river. I'm not going to let that happen on my watch. So, Craig and Bishop, I'm working together on that. So, there's going to be some expenses that are going to be coming up. I'm not sure when it took me, I don't know, a year to mark the 25 miles of trails 10 years ago. It's been a, I started up, I, I, I did the Dwelling Trail and the Baker Road Trail, and they need to be updated. And I thought that was enough, that represents the work that has to be done. So I'm just letting the supervisors know that for work on this project, um, there's going to be some expenses again, I'm not sure what it is. I think we already have some of the posts that we purchased. We do. Yeah. So, um, but we're going to have to put some more letters and numbers on the, on the posts. The idea is when you're on the trail, when you can, when you walk on the trail, we, 100 years ago, I was in the Boy Scouts, and that was a 500 mile on the Appalachian Trail. And when you're on the Appalachian Trail, when you're at one marker, you can always see the next marker. When you get to the next marker, you can only see the next one. When you come to an intersection, there's three markers. These are like the size of the uh, you, uh, marker. They're <clears throat> this big and the white. So there'll be three markers on the trip on the trail that will indicate an intersection. You get to the intersection, you turn to the right or to the left, you look down to the opening to where there's two markers. Then you turn right, you turn left, you get down to that point now. Here's another marker for one. So you always know exactly where you are. We need to fix that. There's a lot of marks on the trails, but they don't satisfy that requirement. My plan is to, to be enable our police officers. So if someone falls, needs some help, they can call and know exactly where they are. Uh, there's a number of us that are, that are familiar with the trail system. My concern is that the people who don't know about the trail marking system, and there's a ton of people who walk the equivalent trail. That parking lot is full, even when it's raining, and when it's cold out. That trail, that trail is utilized all the time. And I just want to be sure that the people who know nothing about our trail marking system will know exactly where they are on the trail. So we call all of us officers, they can tell him, tell them exactly where they are. So again, this is a little bit of a, of a heads up, because we have no idea what the expense is, but I think we can find some money in our township to protect the lives of our citizens in this township. Thank you. I think there's one quick question here. So um, some of the trail um, signage was out on a tree, or on trees. So we're going to- on trees. Yeah, yeah, so we need to, to have more permanence to the- a tree was fine at the time, but trees grow, and trees get branches, and the trees get knocked down, trees are blown down. There's a lot of, on the upper part of the trail trail, right by the bridge, in some of the past roads, there's a ton of trees that are, that are down. And I really compliment our park rep for it. The trail, the, the trail is great. We put a lot of gravel out there over the years, and they're really utilizing the residents of our township 
use these trails all the time. I'm, I'm amazed. Uh, but one of the things is some of the marks have been on the trees. You can't read them anymore. Sorry, the trees got bigger. Now, Mitch did a great job. There's a lot of posts, a lot of signage, but we need to have them more frequently. And so when I'm in, like for the uh, Pin Oak Trail, the PO5, I'm at the PO5, I'm going to be able to see PO6. I'm going to turn around and see PO3, or PO4 behind me. So it's, again, this is for the people who are walking the trails that know nothing about the trail marking system. I want to be real easy for them to call and say, when you call 911, we know exactly where they are. When Craig Harper called, the dispatchers, incidentally, they're not from always from Montgomery County. They're from Philadelphia County. And we learned that because the dispatcher said, where in Philadelphia are you? Excuse me, where in the Poconos are you? She heard the word Pin Oak. The dispatcher thought she was in the Pocono Mountains. <laughs> This is not the Pope of the Mountains. <laughs> and then he smartly said, give me the Lord the Police Department. And within 15 minutes, 10 minutes, I got to there. And he goes up to that. So it, it's, I think it's critical. Craig and Mitch and I had a great meeting a couple weeks ago. I walked through the trails, and then I'm waiting for Mitch to get back to me. I emailed him a couple days ago. So I'm waiting for him to get back to me. And we're going to fix that. And this is we're going to ride the rest of them. Sir? We're going to ride the rest yeah, of them. We're we're right. Yeah, we're going to ride them all. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm a little bit older than I was 10 years ago. Me too. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen that are here, this man was Citizen of the Year uh, for Lower Gwinnett. For that reason. <laughs> he did that on his own. So if you want to qualify for a Citizen of the Year award, do something like that. <laughs> Nobody asked him to do it. He wasn't working for anybody. He just stood up and did that. I mean, remarkable. But we have remarkable people here in Oregon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for letting me say that. Thank you. Does anybody else like to make a comment? Could you come on up, please? Diane Cedar and Elder Glenn. And it reminds me of a saying, this joke. There's three kinds of people in the world. People that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and people that sit around going, what happened? <laughs> so there is the person that makes things happen. We should all be that. So thank you. <laughs> um, all right, I just have a clarifying question. I, I was on the website and I see that we're not formally talking about Peg Fest, but you know, elephant in the room. There's a lot of talk about it like that. So I just want to get a shared expectation of how this is being approached. Like, you, we want to have enough time that whoever's going to be bringing vendors or whatever, that we can be systematic to do that. And I thought it was going to be discussed, but I guess something happened. It's not. But what is a reasonable expectation that we can have to know what's going on or where your heads are at? around our institution of the Clay Fest. Mm -hmm. And I'm a shopper. I mean, I probably want this. I buy everything at any fair, anywhere. So I'm keenly interested in that. So just wondering, where where are you guys around that? Since it's not on this. Well, our subcommittee uh, looked at it, and the subcommittee is made up of our team of supervisors. And you probably don't know it, but when, you, when you're first coming into the board, and even if you've been here for a while, there is a lot going on, and you have to absorb a lot of things. And a lot of it's not obvious. Like today's uh, tonight's uh, manager's report, actually the whole report, including the budget, uh, if you were to read it, it was just some 200 pages long. And that's just tonight. So uh, I think about half of that was line items from our accounting system, Chuck, is that about right? About that? Yeah, so, so there's a lot of things you have to read, a lot of things you have to absorb, and uh, you know, how are things done, right? Just look at the recycling event, right? How does that work? Who does that? How much do you get? When we do, why are we charging uh, you know, residents? Other townships charge residents. I mean, so you get your head around all of it. There just wasn't enough time. So, so I, I work in a, an engineering type role. Let me see if I get this right. 
you can you can have it fast, you can have it cheap, or you can have it good. Yeah. Pick two, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't want it cheap, right? And you want it good. And fast, well, fast and cheap, you're not going to like the result. So um, that's what they're doing. They're, they're taking their time and doing it very deliberately. I come from the medical end. I've been in operating rooms, and the surgeons have a different take. They go, the enemy of good is better. So sometimes, like, let's treat that screw dust one more time. And then, yeah, right. So I'm coming from a perspective, and maybe it's just mine, that everything, I've been so grateful, and I thank you all. I don't know what your individual participation was, but it's fantastic. It's a great representation for us. And I'm not sure what accurate information I have, but i just like to know that it is going to exist again. It's not like the discussion is, are we going to have it or are we not? It's just the logistic, are we changing the day? Are we changing the... Where is well, everything's on, everything's on the table. There's no, there's no, we're not going to have any preconceived notion of uh, our limits in any way. So it's a blank piece of paper. We're taking a look at all the options, subcommittee in particular, and making sure that everything is considered all of you know, the, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and make sure that we get it right. I don't want it fast. Since we had it, I just wondering, was there something that happened? Because it, it seemed like it was one of the township's most successful things. So I'm, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around why is it, what, what was the, the, the instigating moment? It's, it's, it's been, that, that's been going on for years. It's been going on for years because uh, the complaints that we've gotten from both sides of the, of the audience were there. And it really wasn't discussed too much. So, uh, you know, it may have looked like there was one voice. And pretty much when we came to a vote, a vote we like one vote, we really do. But there was, there was a lot of uh, uh, back and forth about what does this really mean and how does this impact all the, uh, all the residents and vendors uh, store shop owners and so forth inside the inclusion zone. And all of those things were discussed, but just not. Uh, so, so it's not new in, in okay. that sense. I just so, didn't know if there was like a slew of all of a sudden yeah. the township was getting complaints from people. And this was. Well, they were getting complaints and we've had more, right? So it's like right. everybody needs to be listened to, right? And, and so that's where we are. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, you. You're, you're welcome. In reference to the pipe fest, uh, I uh, really got out of a sick bed tonight to come to this meeting because of the pipe fest. I was shocked that um, uh, the chair and uh, I guess you call it the new majority uh, did not give an okay to the people that have been running the pipe fest for the last four years. Uh, of uh, setting a date for 2020. There was a discussion at the, one of our public meetings about, uh, about this, and I made a motion, and it did not pass, uh, that uh, let's set the date for 2020 because it's 2020. And if there uh, are discussions between the board uh, and the subcommittee that I'm not on, uh, if they want to investigate this, they can do that. Uh, and then uh, on 2021, they can get a vote with the supervisors, get a feel of the residents, and cancel it if they want to cancel it, or uh, whatever. But the, when you plan things, you have to set schedules, like we do have to do with the re, uh, e cycle. Uh, to, to schedule companies and so forth. Um, Kathy Huntsinger uh, chaired this. Uh, it was a country picnic down in Penland, and she came up with an idea five years ago, let's move this to the pipe. And I have some results of the survey that was sent out, I don't know, from the township or what, 35% of the people on this survey, it's a Pike Fest survey, and Mr. Manager, do you know who did this? Uh, the township. The township. After the uh, meeting with the public uh, okay. Pike Fest committee and Pike Fest subcommittee. It says, um, 
Had we participated in the pipe test in the past, 75.5 yes. Does the pipe uh, fest bring awareness of your business? 68% said yes. Uh, would you be in favor of the pipe, pipe fest um, moving on a, a, to a Sunday if the businesses were closed? 65% said yes. Would you be in favor of moving the pipe fest uh, off of uh, Bethlehem Pipe? 76.8% uh, said no. Uh, I also got copies of uh, emails that came to the township, and 35 emails were in favor of keeping the township, uh, keeping the pipe fest, and it varied from people saying, it, it's such a good thing. Why would you change something good? Four, only four people said to change it. So I am baffled by this board um, of why uh, you would discontinue something that's been so favorable uh, and do it suddenly without doing an investigation, which uh, I think our chairman said they are doing. But let them do that investigation for 2021 and come back to us and say, this is why we think you should have it, and then go from there. You can't delay something in September with all the schedules. Here we are in February. So uh, I'm asking that this board uh, give an OK for 2020. Again, I'll put it on the table. For 2020 Pipe Fest, and let the, uh, the new members of this board, they have the right to take and investigate and ask people. But I'm dumbfounded. I really am that a new board would come in and address things that should be fixed. There are a lot of things that need to be fixed. So, <clears throat> I said my piece, uh, I'm, I'm here, again, only getting out of a sick bed because of the pipe fest. It brings so many positive things. In my close to 50 years in one in a township, this is such a positive thing and people are so happy. So, so why stop something so uh, that, that's so positive when you have definitely some people that say their businesses are on the fight and they can't participate because their equipment is in the room uh, in their business and the people that go there have a tough time getting there and so forth. I was wondering how many of those people are open 52 Saturdays out, uh, out of the year. I don't think a lot of them are. And then one of the responders was a, a restaurant who, who said that he was not in favor of it. But what he did, he bought a table, or rented a table, went down on the pipe uh, and talked to people, gave out menus, and even gave out discounts, and his business increased, and it changed his attitude about the pipe business. So I, I think I, I made the point of where I'm at, uh, but there's five people here. Okay. And I was always told, uh, we all know how to count. But let me tell you, if this goes down tonight, it will be historical and hysterical. And at the same time, it'll be a marked event. I think uh, the new uh, supervisors uh, found out the first Tuesday of November, just count the ballots. And that's true. Count the ballots. And I congratulate them. Something I should have said their first meeting here in January. Congratulate them for being elected because they worked very hard. They outworked their uh, opposition. Uh, they got the votes. So it always comes down to, to, the, to the vote. Let's just count the numbers. And uh, our two new supervisors, again, I congratulate you. I should have given you a, a better courtesy 
uh, on January the 6th. It was one of my worst meetings because I, I, I didn't treat you the way I should have treated the two of you. And I apologize for that. But I'm asking you now, uh, and this is something that I, it just is just coming out because the Pipe Fest is a positive thing. If you want to make some changes, make some changes on things that should be changed. So I said my piece, uh, and uh, I'll leave it with that. Uh, but I also am resurrecting that motion that I made at one of the previous meetings. Let the 2020 event be and scheduled with everybody and continue your, the investigation of taking a look at 2021 so everybody has the time to investigate because like our chairman said, it takes time for them to read everything, to know everything. So even our next meeting, they may not be ready to make a decision. So let 2020 happen. And then when you're done investigating and they have some negativities about it, bring them forward. So that's, that's all I can say. The only thing I would say is that this whole thing shouldn't even be political, but what we should do is look at something that is proven to be very successful. And I look at the Ambler Butler Pike Fair. I've been there a few times, and I couldn't believe the turnout they get. And it's on the main road. It's pretty similar, different street, but they've been doing it a while. And I see that whatever they're doing, they're not doing it in Winston Hickman High School. They're doing it right where it should be. And that's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you supervisor who wants to be recognized? Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to touch on kind of what's happening and kind of answer some of your questions and follow up uh, with some of the statements. Two weeks ago, I think it was January 28th, when we had our board of supervisor meeting, during the public comment portion, an individual got up and there was some conversation prior to it that somebody got up with a specific petition and kind of a narrative around the pipe fest, and it was brought to our attention. That was the first introduction to, I guess, some of the problems the pipe fest has had in various people's eyes. Um, and concerns were brought up through various members of the public and businesses, and, and some in support, and some not in support. It was not on the agenda because we had no anticipation of discussing the pipe fest now. So it was kind of brought to our attention on the 28th. Um, at that time, the individual brought forth a whole four-page narrative with signatures, uh, data collection, and um, figures around how people felt about the pipe fest as it relates to the businesses within the closure zone. So he, within his document, outlined that there was 45 businesses that he surveyed, there was 25 in support of not having the pipe fest on a Saturday and closing Bethlehem Pipe. Um, they talked about the reasons. There was 11 people who were in support of it remaining, and when I say people, I mean the businesses, remaining on Bethlehem Pike as it has been on a Saturday, and nine people that abstained or didn't participate or they couldn't get that person. So they provided us the signatures, he provided us the data, and this honestly was the first time that I really truly was made aware that there was a significant number of individuals who were not happy with the Pike Fest as it related to businesses. So the first question I had was, well, what is the mission of the Pike Fest? Because I remember it at Clemens when it was the country picnic, and then it moved to Penland Woods, and now it's on the Pike. Um, so Tessie and I are members of the Board of Supervisors who sit with the subcommittee. We sat with the subcommittee the very next Saturday, which was February 1st, two members of the subcommittee, um, the Park and Rec director, um, and then Craig was on the phone as well, the other two members of the so we talked about what was happening with the Pike Fest, what are the issues, and they kind of outlined to us how the progression started, the increase in attendance, how it is, a, is it viewed as a successful event, and my first question is, what is the mission of the Pike Fest? And it's to highlight and showcase the businesses in North Wyoming. So then my question is, then why are the businesses complaining? Why is there 25 businesses that are coming forward saying, please don't have this on this Saturday? 
please move it or have it on a Sunday. If, if our purpose and our mission for any event is to highlight and showcase the businesses and the businesses sort of saying that they are uncomfortable, not because they just don't like it, they're losing business. It's, it's now a hindrance to them as opposed to showcase and highlighting them. And they were both ones signing. They put their names on a piece of paper and had no issue with signing it. So we said, you know, how could this be? Were there discussions? And they talked about the outreach, the things that they did in years leading up to the Pipe Fest. Somebody going door to door telling them what was going to happen, how they can transition their business to, um, you know, showcase their wares on the pipe, what, they, what that looks like, and what they needed to do. We had extensive conversations that it went, it went on for over two hours. So we said, could we meet with the entire pipe committee? And could we additionally peruse the idea of circulating an additional survey that's unbiased, meaning there's not an individual who's a property owner or not a business owner, and you know, I'm not a business owner, I'm not a property owner, I have no skin in this game. So could we have somebody who's unbiased participating in circulating a survey? Because 45 businesses isn't the actual number of businesses that are in the closure zone, it's actually 111. So we discussed what those questions would look like who would circulate the survey, a park and rec director, she got right on the ball, got the survey together, and then they walked through how they needed to distribute it. So there's 111 businesses. So our meeting took place on Saturday. The next Thursday was when we were meeting with the entire subcommittee, and that's just last week. They had just begun that, that Thursday circulating the survey. So between Thursday and today, today is Tuesday. There's not a significant number of days that the businesses were open. However, they did do it at least half. And some of the businesses, they didn't have contact information for, so they didn't have emails. They didn't have a way to get this to them quickly. We made a nice little QR code. All you do is scan with your phone, upload the survey to a Google Doc. So they were hand they were hand delivering the survey to those individuals, and it was going to take a little bit more time. So at the conclusion of that meeting, they made the determination it would be un, it wouldn't be in our best interest to make a decision without the completion of this this next survey, which is unbiased, which includes every business, which gives every business the opportunity to have a, have a voice. In the enclosure zone. Just in the closure zone. Um, so that's where it stood. At the last Thursday meeting with the full subcommittee, with the township manager, we said, we don't want to put this on the agenda yet, because we don't have the results of the survey, and we weren't sure when we were going to have the results of the survey. Ironically, they came in last night, but that was after, <laughs> that was after the agenda was published. And in and um, Supervisor Grant did touch on the survey results. Some of them were different than the first data that we got. Um, like he said, 72% said they did participate. 68% said they were in wrong awareness. But 65% said they would rather have it on a Sunday. They That's said they wouldn't be opposed to having it on a Sunday. They said, would you be in favor of PyFest moving to a Sunday, even if your business was closed on Sundays? 65 percent said yes, and that's out of 69 responses. So of the 111 businesses, we got more of a response than the first survey. We had 69 respondents. They indicated that even if your business was closed on a Sunday, they would be in favor of the Pike Fest moving to a Sunday. Now, would you be in favor of the Pike Fest moving off Bethlehem Pike? 76.8 percent said no. That's different than the first data that we got. The first data that we got was 25 percent, 25 individuals out of 45 which was 77%, said they just wanted to change. So we got very specific as to what that change looks like. If our mission is to highlight and, and showcase the businesses in Lower Gwinnett, and this is what we came up with, we need to make the most informed and best decision for those businesses. That's my opinion, and that's the way that the subcommittee and, and, and I am approaching this. So it's not negligent in any, in any way to delay it. We have seven months. If we, we just got this data last night, if we, if we bring it on the agenda next meeting, which would be the 25th of February, I think we have plenty of time. It's a matter of two weeks. Yes, there might be some vendors that aren't going to be able to be available because there's been a two-week delay, but there's a plethora of vendors that exist. So I don't, I don't think that's a large hindrance because our mission is to highlight and showcase the businesses on Bat on Pike. Not to highlight and showcase the vendors, on that one But that's, I just wanted to, to, to explain, I guess, what the progression has been, that it's not been ignored, that this was brought to us, it's not an issue that we took up in anticipation of, let's change the pipe fest. It was brought to our door. 
And in the audio from the January 20th meeting, if you go back and look at it, it's not it's not very easy to hear. But if you listen to it, um, it does talk and it does talk about the, the public that brought that to us. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to also comment. Uh, thanks, Danielle, for explaining that. Uh, there's been a lot of misinformation that's being disseminated uh, that's sometimes quite inflammatory. Uh, I would invite you to look at a source that gives out trusting, uh, truthful information before jumping to conclusions. Um, just like the other supervisors, Danielle and I were elected to represent everyone in the township. And so if a problem is brought to our attention, we're not going to be shouted down by the other vocal um, minority. We, our job is to investigate and try to understand what the problem is, work with the interested parties, and then try to come to a, a good outcome. Everybody will not be happy because there's obviously two sides to every story, but um, our, our best path forward is to try to see if we can find the, the most information of, um, that you know, the survey uh, provides us now. And so now we have some granular information that is unbiased, uh, we think. And uh, we'll take a look at that with the other members of the subcommittee and uh, see what our path forward is. We don't intend to have this uh, investigation be uh, indeterminate. Uh, we do appreciate that decisions need to be made uh, efficiently, which we fully intend to do. But again, we represent everyone in lower Glen, not just the people who are devoted to this uh, event. So uh, we don't uh, disagree that it's popular, uh, but again, we our job is to um, try to um, alleviate uh, problems where it comes to people's uh, sorts of income, especially. May I? While the supervisors are speaking, you'll have to listen just one yes. last one. Day. Thank you. Um, so yes, the uh, highlighting and showcasing the business is just certainly a component of the mission and the reason for the Pipe Fest. But there's another larger component of it too, and that's to bring the community together for our residents. And um, of the 41 emails that we received through the contact us at Lower Gwena Township regarding the Pipe Fest, um, the majority of them were um, in favor of keeping it on the pipe, and the residents were represented. In, oops, excuse me. Were represented in these emails. Um, I have a new phone, and I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> Some people know about this new phone thing. So anyway, um, 21 residents um, of the 21, I think three were not in favor of moving it or didn't have an opinion as to um, being on, on a Sunday. So my point is that it is for the residents too. And the sheer fact of the numbers that come out there for the past four years shows that it is very um, a, a value day for our residents. They get to see the police, they get to see our emergency services personnel, they get to see the supervisors. Um, it's, it's a great community event. Um, and to say that we have seven months to make a decision, I think the point of the matter is, and this is what the committee is um, emphasizing, is that we need time is of the essence at this point. Um, we've had, the date was set, Mr. Brandt said, it hasn't been set, it was set the day after, the week after Pike Fest 2019 and the planning um, started, started at that point. Um, since the January 28th meeting, when this all came to light, which it was kind of tainted to begin with because all the information was just stripped from the website without the knowledge of anybody, not even the committee or the other board members. So I think we've, it really got off to a, to a tainted start to begin with. But since that 28th, January 28th meeting, they've had these two meetings with the Pike Fest co-chairs and the committee. We've had these emails that have come in um, on the contact us at lowergwena.org. We do have the survey now, and Mr. Brand uh, highlighted some of those um, results. So I think we have enough information, and a lot of these things aren't 
entirely data driven. It's about our community. It's the feel that we, we get when uh, participating in this event. It's it's show like this at the meetings here. And, um, you know, we're elected to make decisions. We don't, we, decisions have deadlines too, just like the community needs to make deadlines. And that's why we're here. I think it's time for us to make a decision. And um, I will second Mr. Brandt's motion. Hi, Carol Jones, 390 Mansion Avenue, Kevin. Um, at the last meeting, I had asked a question about what about the residents, um, because when I was here, and I heard a lot about the businesses, a lot about the businesses, and I had asked, well, what is, like Danielle said, what is the purpose of the Pipe Fest? So um, it came back to me that the purpose of the Pipe Fest was to highlight the businesses uh, in Norway, and I'm assuming particularly the businesses that are in that part of Norway. So, outside of the fact that um, some of the businesses are making the complaints, or now that you have the survey and you have all that, that data and information there, and um, Supervisor Hunsinger just said what I always thought. I've been participating in the Pipe Fest since it was the country picnic over here in Clemens. Every year I participate, I go, I enjoy the I really do enjoy the event of being there. And I always thought the purpose was a community event, for us to have a community event. So way back then, and even until recently, I'm not sure when, outside vendors were not participating. They weren't permitted to participate in this event. It was closed to lower wedded businesses. And that's why I said, okay, maybe it is just to highlight lower wedded business if that was the purpose. So um, but it goes on to say that what made them add, if it was for to highlight lower wedded businesses, why did we add outside vendors? It's really clear that attendance was really poor when we were trying to highlight lower winning businesses. When just lower winning businesses participate, no one came. Nobody wants to come and see the, the businesses in lower winning get highlighted and bring their kids out on a Saturday afternoon. What caused the Pipe Fest, now the Pipe Fest, to be able to increase in the crowds was the outside vendors. Outside vendors came in and people are now coming to a festival. They're not going to a business expo, they're coming to a festival. And there's a lot of things that happen at the festival. There's good food, there's things that the business can bring also, but there's a lot of outside vendors in there. Which goes, brings me to the next point. There is no more space. What happens to the businesses that want to participate, that are not participating right now, that would like to participate on the pipe? Where do they go? What happens to lower winning businesses that are located elsewhere when they are owned by residents of lower winning and they want to showcase it? What happens to the little lady that sells jewelry and she's just a resident? Where do these people go? How do we expand the, the, the benefits? Where, where do we go for an expansion there? So the question is, do we put out the vendors? Do we put out the other businesses? Do we say it's just closed to the people that participated in the future? How do we allow the community who love fest and love going to the festival and the businesses, how do we do that if we continue to be right there on the pipe? So can I just ask for clarification, were you saying that it was closed to businesses when it was at Penland Park? It was closed to outside to outside dinners as country picnic in Penland Woods. Well when it was when it started out in Penland Woods. Or maybe even country picnic. When did you so, add outside vendors? So the first year we gave priority to local businesses, and we would let outside vendors in if they weren't competing with local lower rented businesses that appeared on the pipe. Right, so you would continue to do that, no? Well, we are continuing to do that. So as long as they don't compete with the big well, businesses in lower rented or businesses on the pipe? Businesses that are signed up to be vendors on so if I have jewelry, if I sell jewelry, nobody else can do that? <coughs> if you're a, um, a jewelry lower rented business? If I'm a lower rented resident, that's my business. Am I able to participate? I Who is so this you. for? I, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand. This is for everybody. Okay, so for everybody. Now that you're out of space. No one's extra now. We were packed last year. We, we had it was wonderful last year. It was wonderful. And I do dispute your that the attendance was low the first year. The first year where? 
on the planet. No, I'm not talking about the planet. It, it has grown. It's growing. Yeah. It's growing. And that shoe is marvelous. It's so, growing every year. So the, the, but that's due to outside vendors. It has it, people are not coming to a business well, expo. You no, know, you're right. And it's not like I said, it's not solely for businesses. We so have what, to who do you not include now? If I don't think they don't like, not include anybody. Well, how do you I mean, I, I'm not how do you possibly do it? There's no more space. Can I say something? Are the no, people that live no. in Springhouse Woods no. gonna have to, you know, you're gonna the people that live in Springhouse Woods, you wanna move in that direction to No, we can't. Home? Logistically we can't That's so what we do. Who part. can't participate? That I love the type fest, but I think logistically I'm you're out of space to have a wonderful festival we, where all the residents can participate and every person that has a business in the it can also participate. Well, that's a good thing for our space. That means it's popular. It's so who gets right? The business is on the pipe. Right? When the rest of the businesses are going to end up. That the businesses, I believe, that the way that the um, application process works is that it's opened up to local businesses for the first month or so, and then they open it up to outside vendors. I, I believe that's the case. <coughs> okay. So, so, we so all the businesses come, and all the businesses show up, and no outside vendors are permitted to come. Do you think we'll have the same result? Um, as far as crowds? I'm, I'm not understanding the question. I said, if all the business, if you're full from participation in just small money businesses, and there are no vendors participating. What happens to the crowds of people? And what do we think will happen to the crowds of people? I, I can't answer that question. I can. Before they came in there, there was nobody that showing up. There's nobody that showed up before. That's why you had an outside vendor. Oh. What's, what's happening? Okay, one, one of the top, okay. Thank you. Now, a number of hands came up here. Who? Please, come on. Thank you. My name is Emma Smith. Okay. I live uh, on Devon Lane, Winnipeg. Please use the microphone. Thank My you. name is Emma Smith. I live in Winnipeg. Um, I'm seeing more women. It seems to me that we're discussing everything but the committee. And I go back to what Supervisor Brands is saying. Let it go for this year. The points that you're bringing up, I think, are some good points. But then let new supervisors have the time to work that out in the following year. It's the committee that does all the work here. They're the ones that we should allow to be having more input into this. Yes. Spring House Properties, and we have 40 tenants, and I had just a tent or two, and they could bring, because I'm the property manager, I was allowed to let them, if they wanted to try it, to bring a table, and it was massage therapist, psychologists, lawyers, whoever, and so that was just one or two tents, and it could have 40 people. Like, not, believe me, not everybody did it, but so I, I think there's room for everyone, even outside. There's no more room on the pipe. <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I don't know, but I wasn't worried that they sold out that people. Um, you know, weren't able to get a tent. Now we didn't turn anybody away. Then. No, we, not, we not that. We, and I, we participated a few years and it kept growing and my tenants are excited, but I have 40 and out of that one survey, I, I, don't, I don't know that anybody was at my buildings for that. Um, but as I said, it grew and um, they all liked it and I'm trying to get even new businesses to, to join and be part of it, but also 
the community. Uh, I put it on my Facebook page. I've seen friends from high school there. It, you know, it's been growing. And I'd like to say, hence the word pipe fest, that that's, I feel it should be left on the pipe. So, thank you. since it started on Pike. I uh, was the signature sponsor for the Pike Fest in 2018. Um, I'm not sure, I do appreciate the, uh, the fact that the, for our survey, the tenth down by our survey, I think the day the signature should receive. Um, I'm not sure where, what the source was, but as far as I know about this, as far as the solicitor, I will not have a sign with those people on it. The venue for the day. Uh, I responded immediately to the survey that I got by email, and I appreciate that. Um, one of the consistent complaints I've had in the last few years um, you had said that we don't have direct competitors, but I, I know we don't have that as a force because past several years we've seen several direct national competitors on the fight, like Renewal and Anderson, for example. And, um, three or four each time, and uh, you know, we, we did each time express our, our displeasure with the uh, inclusion of those direct competitors to us with the other uh, participants. I um, don't want to take too much time, just to the person I think that we would be going to fight, the fight that stay on fight, and also stay on fight. Is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> About Janky, three big crop being in Spring House. Um, I guess my question really relates to the timing. Of it. it sounds like some things have started to move, but based on everything that we heard two weeks ago from the committee, if, Again, I have a feeling that unless something gets moved and, and proved to allow people to go ahead with the work that started last September, it's very difficult to see how um, the, uh, the Pike Fest could come off in, uh, in time for September 12th. Uh, and, and one thing um, that I did not hear tonight. Uh, was any idea of when a decision is expected to become forthcoming. Uh, I think it's good work that you've done to check with all the businesses, the 100 and whatever it was, and not just 25 and 45, whatever the number was we heard from the weeks ago. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have time to survey of all how many thousand people we have in our communities. To check um, uh, you know, again, I think we come back to the fact of when are we going to do, what are we going to do. Um, there is one, I, I went back to try to find any commitments around dates. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any because there are no minutes on which is a separate question, but let's put that up for I would, I would like to know why the minutes aren't published, but nevertheless, um, the only commitment that exists anywhere in the minutes is on the audio minutes. At 10 minutes before the end of the meeting of January 28th, Mr. Chairman, you made a commitment to Mr. Altman, Mm -hmm. Allman, is it Allman or Altman? Mm -hmm. That was the chairman of the Pike Fest. Uh, that he would be back by this meeting with a decision and all of the things that were, were feeding into that. It's the only date that we have at this point. So the fact that it wasn't on the agenda for this evening obviously was a surprise, and the note came through. 
So we figured there was had to be something, but um, it's it's good to see that there's work going on. But at times we have to just you know it's it, it's time to get on with it and uh, and recognize that as Mr. Grant pointed out, you know there's plenty of time to make corrections and, and fight this in no matter what it is, where it is, or where it's held, or what they it's held on this year, if it's held this year, is, is not going to be perfect. But the idea from the past has been to make it a little better each year. And I think with uh, the attention that it's getting and with the level of commitment that it seems to be getting from the, the committee, the subcommittee, and, and the community, as well as the businesses, uh, I think it could be made even better for the future years as well. So I would uh, encourage you to consider Mr. Grant's motion and to go ahead with IPES for this year in 2020. Um, I, I guess, let me, let me just close with one thing. Just from the subcommittee's viewpoint, do you have any objection to doing that? To, to going ahead with Mr. Grant. Well, I was going to respond to you with that. Okay. So, the entire subcommittee sat with us. We, we didn't come up with the decision to circulate a survey up on our own or to wait for the results. And the subcommittee decided that they wanted to have an additional meeting mm -hmm. and include the individual who brought this to us from the January 28th meeting, um, include him in the discussions and to review the survey results. That's the, the decision of the last subcommittee meeting that we left it with. So I guess that was last Thursday. Um, after two hours, again, of meeting, about nine something, we decided we, after we got the survey results, we wanted to come back and go over it as a committee and invite the individual who brought this to us um, on the 28th meeting as to be part of the discussion mm -hmm. moving forward. So we as the sub, we're not making decisions without the subcommittee. It was. Oh, I didn't mean to imply that. No, I didn't. This, 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 see this, which way this, we were going. Yeah. And, and whether there was any impediment from the viewpoint of you two supervisors or the, the subcommittee to going ahead with Mr. Brandt's uh, well, uh, motion. We can't fully really bring a recommendation from the subcommittee without us meeting with them, seeing as that we just got the results of the survey yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are really concerned. And there's my little I guess that is one of our goal uh, on the subcommittee, obviously, to do away with the pipe test. That is <clears> not <throat> our interest nor our goal. Well, okay. I, the, the one concern that I would have then is the represented mission of the pipe test as being to uh, broadcast, publicize, broaden the, the base for lower limit businesses. But what I didn't hear you saying, but which I heard Supervisor Kathleen saying, was that and to uh, incorporate the community in a uh, broad community festival day. And I didn't hear that in part of what you stated as the mission for, uh, for the pipe fest. And therefore, I wonder if your focus is not entirely on business and is ignoring the uh, the community as a well. well I don't wanna I don't wanna interrupt you before you're finished. Right. But the first the way that it was um, presented to us is that was the goal of the pipe test. That was the reason why I was on the pipe. Right. And then added the community aspect later. Um, so has how it was presented to us from when we met with the subcommittee, that's how it was presented. The purpose is to highlight and showcase the businesses on the pipe. And then later and add the community component. That, that is the mission so, statement. So, can I interrupt you? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, so, at this meeting on Saturday, where you asked for the mission, were you actually shown it? Because it was, we couldn't find it because it was taken off the website. But was the entire thing, um, the entire mission about the community plus the businesses presented to you, or was it just to, um, to further and highlight the uh, the businesses of Lover Women. As the mission Saturday, was told, it was told to us that it was to highlight and showcase the businesses on the pipe fest. We asked, is it written anywhere? Later, Craig actually forwarded it to us. Sandy did. Sandy did. Sandy forwarded it to us in an email um, that included the community aspect as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that was the first time we actually saw it on paper. But the way that was presented to us initially was it the purpose of the pipe fest is to. So my question to that was, why is it on the pipe now? Like if the business is not upset. Because if it's, a, if it's just a community day, why do you block all the money? And then obviously it's to showcase and highlight the businesses. So I mean, there was questions and there was discussions all around the mission and what the vision was and what the purpose was and what the intent was and how are we measuring success as it relates to that purpose and that well, mission. I think my observation would be that you've been uh, the unfortunate recipients of bits and pieces of information and you've been put under the gun to act, uh, act on partial information and not the whole information. Uh, now that you have the whole information, the, the time has still continued to go on by. And uh, if you continue to survey and analyze and uh, go forward, if, if, if you do not act quickly, I, I fear that every day that goes by now, we're, we're losing the potential for life. I just want to follow up just really quickly. I don't want to interrupt. Sure. But the first meeting of the subcommittee was actually scheduled for February 7th, which was last Thursday, which is when we actually met. Well, actually, I, I don't know who took, who took the uh, IFS thing down from the website. I took it off the website, if that's your question. Is that a board of supervisors? No, as chairman, I took it down. I had to take it down, just so we're clear on why. Because that, 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 that had the pipe test listed on the pipe. And it had a um, obligation for a location of the pipe, and we were going to accept uh, monies from vendors. Well, if there's an issue of when or where, the township can't be accepting money from uh, from vendors for a event that may change. I but thought it took it down immediately. But it had been there since September or October. Um, late December, I believe, early January, when we went live. So you took it down um, early January because you were questioning the, the location or the date. So no, I was please... questioning the, 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 what would have been a contract. Right. Right. But and there was an issue that was open. So you knew there was some issue before the issue was made public at the January 28th meeting. There, there's been an issue. Uh, on this pun fest for quite some time, and I'm going to address it uh, after everybody has had a chance to talk, because everybody needs to have an opportunity. Um, but, Robert, is there anything else you might like to add? Uh, no, I would, after we finish the pun fest issue, if you could comment on where are the minutes? That's we can take the minutes. If we table the minutes They're just like well. any, we table the minutes like I said a minute ago. We've uh, or when we came to that on the item on, on the agenda, the, the minutes have been tabled. This is this is this is, this is not an unusual event to have minutes tabled. We've also never had recordings either. This that's not unusual. So things have changed, and we want to make sure we get that right too. So it's not like, and you can listen to the minutes, the minutes, the minutes are on the website, the, uh, the recording. So it's not like we're, no, 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 what's going on. The January 28th is on the website, but the others are not. In the normal course of business, they wouldn't be. That's what I'm saying. Because if you look at when minutes get taken, when they get recorded, when they're brought to the township supervisor to vote, and or be tabled, and then when they get published. That's the normal life cycle. We're not changing that life cycle. So speaking of minutes, um, I had specifically asked for minutes for the Saturday, February um, 6th meeting, first meeting with the subcommittee. Uh, I was told that they were being taken. And then when I sent an email over to the township, to the manager and CC'd all the supervisors, I asked them for those me meeting minutes for that Saturday subcommittee meeting. Uh, the immediate response from Supervisor Gray was, quote, subcommittee minutes, release slash timing, are at the pleasure of the supervisors. And I'm assuming he means the supervisors who were intended, in attendance. So subcommittee mi minutes, release and timing, are at the pleasure of the supervisors. He made that up, and basically what that amounts to is that supervisors can withhold meeting minutes from other supervisors. 
which is not the way, I mean, that's not transparent up here and that's not transparent out there either. Just so I want to address that. Um, this is a minutes of a subcommittee of a subcommittee. At no point has Lower Gwen, to my knowledge, ever had those. And in addition to that, there would have to be someone there from staff to take those. Sandy is staff. Uh, well, I, 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 all I can tell you minutes. is that we don't have subcommittee minutes of subcommittees. The answer to that is no, that I'm aware of. And if there's any time, any other place in our in our um, legislative history, in the agenda, that that's happened in the last 10 years, he's pointed out. Well, the there, client, I there was, I'm reason. still talking. Okay. I, I have the floor. Well, you answer the question. You are going to Mr. Brent. I have the floor. I know it, 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 it has never it happened. Uh, well, you know, I, I disagree with you. You ask a question or disagree? I have the floor. Oh, you, you have the floor. You have the floor. If you want to talk, we'll give you a chance to talk. All right. So, to my knowledge, that's never happened, and, and, and the, to imply that somehow we're hiding something, I just think it's really not uh, helpful. Well, perhaps it hasn't happened, but there was a specific request by me to the manager to have minutes taken. They were taken. I asked for them. Given your response, you were assuming that. You were acknowledging, yes, indeed, there were minutes taken, but they will be released, all. and the timing of such a release would be at the pleasure of the supervisors it's, in attendance. It's never, it's never. And this is also part of the um, transparency pledge that the two new supervisors signed, and I think it's an excellent idea that minutes of every public meeting and every subcommittee meeting be taken and posted on the website in the spirit of true transparency. So those minutes are somewhere. I would like to see them at some point. Uh, I don't know that there are other minutes. Uh, you know, two supervisors. I, uh, Craig was on the phone, and I don't know if he's in to take minutes. I, I don't think there was a request to us to take minutes. This was an ad hoc meeting and not a regularly scheduled meeting of the subcommittee to the committee. So it wasn't uh, apparent uh, to me, at least, that there, need, there was a need for minutes. The, the meeting took place because Sandy actually requested the meeting. And she requested it weeks ago. So prior to the January 24th supervisor meeting, Sandy asked the meeting. Yeah. It, it, so the actual subcommittee, Sandy may have taken notes. Yeah. If you if there's a desire for somebody to uh, ask us to take minutes of a meeting, then that needs to be expressed to us. <laughs> Because we're definitely not mind readers. Well, I'd just like a clarification on that. The, 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 the transparency pledge that you both signed as part of your campaign last year, mm -hmm. you signed it on the 29th of uh, September, mm -hmm. does indicate that minutes would be taken and published as soon as possible on every kind of meeting, subcommittee meeting. Associated with the the actions of the government agency that you would be involved with. So I guess what I'd like to ask is, will you be taking minutes, and will you? Does your comment from a minute ago imply that you don't believe that that pledge applies to the things that's Well, that pledge uh, is was a, a pledge, and we intend to stand behind it. The meeting on Saturday with Sandy. It was, wasn't a subcommittee meeting. It was just a meeting. It was an ad hoc meeting. Right. Because last week we understood on the 28th that it was going to be a committee meeting in order to deal with these. The subcommittee meeting took place on Thursday, February 7th. And Craig and Sandy were both there. And Sandy looked to be taking minutes. She was writing notes and documenting what we were saying. So I did not take notes because I could see that they were both there to take notes. The meeting between me, Tessie, Sandy, Craig, Larry Altman, and who else was one? Kathy Morris. Kathy Morris. Kathy, yes. Um, that was just a meeting for us to just, Sandy had requested for us to talk because we hadn't met with her at all related to the white list. And she requested that prior to the January 20th Board of Supervisors meeting. I think what prompted that request was the um, the takedown of all the pipe test information on the website without explanation. 
Like I said, she just requested me. Okay. Is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to join your comment? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Jerry Christopher. I'm the president of the Long Winter Business Association. Um, my concern is I've been on committees that have done big events. The amount of time and effort that goes into these um, events, these people are volunteers. This is a part time uh, position. This is, um, they have lives, they have uh, jobs, families. I just think it's really disrespectful of their time and effort that they've already put in since September to get this pipe fest going. Um, I guess they have seven more months, but if you ask them, that seven months will go by in a second because of the amount of time and work that needs to go into these to make them successful. And I just feel it's really disrespectful to them to be delaying um, when there's so much work to be done, um, so much time has already been put in. I mean, if you guys change the date, everything that they've done since September has to be changed. Everything, every form, everything on the website, everything has to be changed. The amount of time, I mean, unless the supervisors want to chip in and help, the committee with the work, that would be awesome. But the, I don't think it, you guys realize the amount of work that has to go in to change. Uh, I'm changing one day from a Saturday to a Sunday. Everything, everything that they've done since September is, is trash. Everything, every form, everything. I, I really hope you guys really decide to go with Supervisor Brent and just let 2020 continue as it is and go through, uh, look at 2021, because I really hate to see that all the work that they've done since September actually goes into the trash. Because if you guys change anything, everything gets, it has to be limited. Everything, every piece of paper that has a game on it. Last money trash. And the amount of time to do that is, is ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's not even including signing up vendors, everything else that has to be done. I mean, the amount of work that they do is unbelievable. That's why I'm not on that committee. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I just feel that I think you guys really, really need to. The amount of work that's been done, and and what would have to be done. So, thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Uh, hi, my name is Don Thompson. I live in Sunbrook. I just had a quick question. And now you had said that the gentleman who had. Give me the four page report. You guys write back to your next meeting. That's a self committee recommendation. That why for what reasons? They want to come. Um, He's clearly against having pipe fest, and his numbers were off. As well as some of the numbers, I think that right now you're, you had just said that the new census is off because forty people in the building didn't even get questions. I don't know that they did. The questions about they did they respond? Yeah, so it wasn't my suggestion. It was the it was the suggestion of some of the members of the subcommittee that they wanted to invite him back to the meeting to review the data that they have taken our advice. So oh, what about the actually for the for the pipe fest, would you invite them back? There was a lady here who had has a secret. She's on the subcommittee. I'm right here. So Hillary's on the subcommittee. Their business is on the subcommittee. It's not made up of um just us, and if there's businesses, there's, there's So it's open for anybody else to come to me? Or I don't see why not. not. Okay. I don't see why not. That's what we, we just had the results last night, so we're, we're in the, we haven't scheduled this. So how would we handle when that need is to put the credit schedule? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'll see you on that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, I bet they will go out to anybody well, in this room or anybody who's in favor of the they want to come to that subcommittee. It was, it was for the subcommittee, and they, wanted, they specifically named him by name, and yeah. they wanted him to attend. Um, we didn't have any objection to it. Okay. Okay, I just want to see that it was open to anybody who wants to attend. I don't, I don't know if it's. I think it would be difficult to open it up to the public and get anything done mm -hmm. there, but I'll let the subcommittee determine that. Okay. Um, okay. So that was awesome. okay. Hi, I'm Hillary Goodman. I work to run. I'm just Relationship talking about. Actually, I'm on the subcommittee because I put on the uh, 5K race, which uh, kicks off Pike Fest, which if we don't get an answer, there will not be a 5K race. Um, I find it fascinating that there is such animosity and hostility to a community day event. It's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to have a good time. It's amazing. The survey that allegedly was taken around with the 25 names never came to me. Never showed up at my store, and I'm a standalone building, really can't miss me. So it seems a little rigged. And as it, in regard to years past of having problems, we had a meeting two years ago. We had that meeting with the Dog and Pony Show. I recall the president of the Business Association giving a Tony Award winning performance uh, regarding everything. And, um, and we went forward with Pipe Fest. And it's successful. I had a woman in tonight to, at my store who found out about me because of Pipe Fest. And it is a fun time. I do not understand why people are so against it and what the real problem is. And can you move it to Houston Road? Nobody has even thought that you want to move it to Houston Road on a Saturday in the fall. There's something called football that goes on. And they have a stadium that if they're not using it, they rent it out. So nobody has even looked into this. You want to move it, nobody's even thought about it. You want to move it to a Sunday, you haven't thought about the police cost. It's even more money. You have a successful event. You have a few people who are unhappy. You are always going to have people who are unhappy. They, they see the glass as half empty instead of half full. They can make it work for them. As in regard to if you want to participate and, and you are a business on the pipe, you are more than entitled to get a table. You don't need a table. In years past, when I did not have my own parking lot, I still participated within the parking lot of my shopping center. It is a wonderful event, but if you keep putting this off, it will not happen. And that is a shame. It is a, a, a crying shame for this township. It's great to invite people in. There's, there's not that much to invite people into the pipe. There are many ways to avoid the pipe. You have Morris Road. You have 309. And this brings people. They are walking up and down. They are enjoying it. They're having a great time. It would be a shame. It would be a shame to, to not have this event. Are there any more uh, members of the audience that like to talk? Okay, we're good. So everybody's had a chance to talk. So um, I'm going to give you my perspective, right? So I've been on the board for 10 years. Um, we had it at Clemens Market before I was on the board, like 10 minutes. And we had it at Penland Woods. And Penland Woods was strictly a, uh, a community event. And then the idea was floated to move it because it was not successful. And successful if you look at the numbers. And it was there for at least the three years, beginning three years of my tenure, uh, maybe more. Um, so then where would we move it? We discussed primarily two venues. One was the high school, one was the pipe. And we determined after um, many conversations that we would put it on the pike. But the idea would be that we would showcase the businesses, but this was also supposed to be a community event, not strictly a business event. And when you walk the pike, primarily the vendors out there are selling 
storm doors and windows. Anderson windows showed up every every year, selling windows and that type of thing. Uh, but it was not the, the the focus was not on community events. It just wasn't. So the concept of moving it in alternate years to the high schools so we could have both uh, a community carnival event, like similar to what we have for 4th of July, and, and alternately have it on the pipe that, to focus uh, on the businesses, gained no traction, zero, not good. When we first put this together, we decided what we would do is professionalize. So we brought in Main Street managers. And Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we interviewed four or three. Um, yes. Yeah, bring them in. Then. Because putting this on the uh, volunteers is too much. It's too big. It's too complicated. If, if, when somebody has a job nine to five, putting on an event, that's their job and that will get done. If somebody has, you know, a family, and we heard from a social worker in a class meeting, when they have those types of things, your family comes first, let's face it, it does. And yes, it's a tremendous burden on the volunteers. Tremendous. Well, the idea of professionalizing it, again, went nowhere. Couldn't, bring, couldn't gain any traction. It was left in the uh, in the uh, pipe, well, it became the pipe fest, but part of Parks and Rec, then a subcommittee, and, and then it stayed there. Not good. And then in 2017, we had a petition that came in that said, please move it. There was nobody in the room but him and us. Again, no traction. And Mr. Brandt made the recommendation that we should leave it where it is and discuss it next year because we will run out of time. Made sense to me because you don't want to impact something that everybody goes to. Well, what happened the next year? Nothing. It got no traction. So where is the community in this? It's supposed to be a replacement for what we did at Clements and what we did at Penland Park which we would then include businesses in. It has be, it's been flipped on its head. It is now an event that it's all about the businesses and there are no community, uh, there is no community view of the world because why? It's all, let me finish, it's all about the businesses. That's what happened. Pendlet Park was about the community and the Penlet and the Pipe Fest turned into a business function. So now, now we have another opportunity to take a fresh look at it, and that's what we're doing. And now Ms. Hunziker also mentioned she's got emails running, however the percentage was, right? And I'm aware that uh, a posting was put on social media. If you agree all that it should stay there, send, a, send an email. Well, what about the people that didn't agree? Where is their voice? Is there, is, there a, is there a posting that went out like that? And the answer is no. So what we're looking at right now is the data. This should all be the data. That's what we should be looking at. And we should be open up to different ways of looking at this data in the way we have it before. And that's what the, that's what, um, uh, the new supervisors are doing. So all I'm asking for is be patient Let's take a look at it and let's see where it goes. If I could just comment on your comments. Um, we have a completely different recollection of the change up of this event from Country Picnic to Pike Fest. And I certainly would um, take note that I've been the chair of the Country Picnic and was part of the change up to the Pike Fest. I don't remember any discussion about moving it from Penland Woods to Houston Road. We took a year off, we investigated closing the pipe, it could be done, and we moved it to the pipe. No recollection of moving it to Houston Road, let alone a discussion about alternating between Bethlehem Pipe and Houston Road. Nor do I remember anything about 
professionalizing the Pike Fest and interviewing four different Main Street managers. That just, uh, <coughs> I have no idea where that's coming from. Unless again, that was done without my knowledge, which is a lot's been happening that way in the last six weeks. Um, and yes, it is a huge amount of work for the, for the <coughs> volunteers, but it's a labor of love. They get to work with the businesses. They get to work with one another. This committee has been together for a number of years. Larry Altman has been um, on the Pike Fest Committee and Country Picnic before that for over 15 years. Um, and the committee works well together. It's, it's fun. And this is dragging it down really big time, very, very much big time. So I absolutely disagree with your genesis of it from the Country Picnic to the Bethlehem uh, to the Pike Fest. It was definitely um, an effort to showcase and revitalize Bethlehem Pike, bring attention to the businesses. But the community was never locked out of it, ever. That was a big consideration of it. Thus, we have the food trucks. Thus, we have the entertainment for the kids. Thus, we have, you know, we've got Ampler Yards and SHIP and all the other larger campuses who donate, sponsor, um, donate uh, the Adirondack chairs, uh, sponsor the um, moon bounce, whatever. So um, I, it's just really unfortunate what we're going through here. And I, and I just need to express my disappointment and um, my thankfulness to the committee. Um, and you know, hope, hope that we can resolve this tonight. We do have an outstanding motion, which I second in, and I believe the chairman to uh, usher that through. I'd like to make a, another comment if I could, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, the new members of the board and also um, our chairman have some concerns and want to look at different areas um, to make sure we're, we're in the right direction. And my motion was to do that. Uh, but um, get back to us and we can address recommendations for 2021. Having a little bit of experience of putting things together, um, namely the Amber Christmas Parade in 1976 was not going to be. And I moved in the area in 73 and uh, I resurrected that parade. Uh, in 1980, I was very disappointed uh, that this area didn't have fireworks. Uh, my children uh, had burns on their hands playing in the backyard. Uh, it was a temple, uh, but temple didn't have fireworks anymore. Uh, you had to go to Country Hockey or you had to go to Narsen. So uh, I'm happy to say in 1981 was the first time we had fireworks in Amber in this community. And as you know, it has grown and it's very appreciative. So uh, I'm still involved with that. Um, and the reason I mention those events is the Pike Fest. It takes time to put these things together. It takes time to lock in contracts to all these different associations that may be in a parade, or uh, vendors that may be at a carnival, and the fireworks people, because uh, the, they lock in the dates around the fourth. That's the first thing they lock in. You can hire them in the winter if you want, but uh, there's no demand. So getting back to my emotion, I'm asking the new members of the board, and you, Mark, because you have some concerns about it, which are obvious, and you're allowed to have those, but continue to do what you're doing, but do not interrupt the 2020 pipe. Um, we have a whole year to go into these results of your subcommittee meetings, uh, your suggestions, and so forth. But now is the time that they have to con sign contracts. They can't wait any longer. Uh, our chairperson was here at the last meeting, and uh, you, Mark, said it would be addressed uh, at this meeting. But it wasn't on the agenda because you had some intense 
subcommittee meetings, and they still are going on, and there's a lot of questions. But that's why we have this year to really get deep into it. Go with the 2020 uh, this year, let them sign the contracts, and we'll listen to these concerns and so forth. But to walk out of this room tonight without three votes saying, let 2020 go as it is, and let's get into 2021, <coughs> would be catastrophic. I mean, it's unbelievable. I can't, I can't imagine that you do it that would do that. So I'm asking you, take the time for your investigation during 2020 to address 2021. But please give us a third vote of moving on. That's all I have to say. Well, I'm going to have to ask our parliamentarian, but I believe what I'm hearing is a motion to reconsider the vote from the last meeting. And the last meeting's vote was voted down. And we're asking for a vote to reconsider our last vote. So there was a vote taken last meeting. It your, was. Your, your motion last meeting, as I recall, was to move ahead with the uh, date as was originally um, uh, scheduled in 2020. And that vote was, was uh, it did not pass. So would our, would our parliamentarian ask to uh, answer the question here? So it's a vote to reconsider our prior vote. So do we have to vote on the reconsideration or do we have to vote on uh, Mr. Grant's motion to uh, allow, I want to make sure I get this right, allow the pipe fest to proceed as it was originally set. Regardless of what he's asking, mm -hmm. there is a motion on the floor and there's a second. Uh, Wouldn't that specify as a motion to reconsider? Uh, I guess I, I haven't seen the minutes to say exactly what, what happened, but you, either way, the motion is the same.
and you're, you're taking the air out of the bubble that these people had that gave all their volunteer times and everything. That's, uh, I said, that I think everybody knows how I feel. This one's here. I have nothing for it. Um, we can hear I'd just like to say that we are going to pursue uh, this and try to reach a decision expeditiously. Uh, we do have survey results that would indicate the majority of people responding to the survey would actually like to move the day to Sunday. So we obviously would be defeating our investigation and our deliberations if we vote to keep the day without uh, going back to the subcommittee and discussing this a little more and uh, putting it 